Hi students, you know many times in our daily life we talk about pure substances, isn't it? We talk about pure salt, pure milk, pure butter, you know, is this thing pure? Is this oil pure? We talk in such terms. But what is pure for a scientist? You can have pure milk, but is that milk pure for a scientist? You can have pure salt, but is it pure for a scientist? And what about this butter? If the packet says pure butter, does that mean that a scientist will also find, you know, that this butter is pure? Not really. In fact, all these substances that we use in our daily life are mixtures. In this chapter, we're going to learn the meaning of a mixture and, you know, different types of mixtures. We're also going to learn how to distinguish between a pure substance and a mixture. Understood? For a scientist, what does the word pure mean? And if something is not pure, what does the word mixture mean? We learn about pure substances and mixtures in detail in this chapter. The meaning of a mixture. So let's proceed. First of all, you know, before we understand mixtures, let's understand what the word pure means. Simply put, the word pure means that, you know, a pure substance will consist of a single type of particles. Isn't it? So for example, this substance, you know, whose particles you can see moving on your screen. It's a pure substance. That is because this substance consists of only one type of blue particles. Isn't it? You can see that on your screen. There are no other types of particles. So all pure substances contain only one single type of particles. If you take water for example, which is a pure substance, you know water always consists of water particles. Isn't it? Like no matter what physical process you know you make water undergo, it will always consist of only water particles. So really pure substances contain only one single type of particles. This is one important characteristic of a pure substance. Another important characteristic is that you know pure substances cannot be broken down into other substances by means of physical processes. So for example if you filter a pure substance like this, even then you'll still obtain the same pure substance. If you break a pure substance like this, you know, something like this, you will still obtain different pieces and different particles of the same pure substance. Pure substances cannot be changed into something else by physical processes. Physical processes, when I say that, I mean breaking, dissolving, cooling, vaporization, using your hands. You just cannot break a pure substance into another substance. Why? Because it's pure, isn't it? So these are the two important characteristics of pure substances. One, that they contain the same kind of particles and two, you cannot break them to get different other substances. In fact, we can now define a pure substance. A pure substance is a form of matter that consists of only one kind of particles. It cannot be separated into other substances by physical processes. Understood? So, you know, we've summed up both these points in this definition. Let's now take a look at some substances which we see in our daily life. Take a look at this water. Water is a pure substance, isn't it? It contains the same kind of particles and no matter what physical process water undergoes, it still remains water. Sugar. You know, all sugar contains the same sugar particles, isn't it? No matter what you do, you cannot break sugar and get, say, iron or gold or anything else. Similarly, gold itself is a pure substance. As you can see, you know, all these substances are pure because they contain the same kind of particles and no matter what physical process they undergo, they will not change, like they will not give some other substance. In fact, let's take a detailed look at water. If these blue particles you see are water particles, in that case clearly, no matter what sample of water you take, no matter what quantity you take, water will always have water particles and no other type of particles. Now, vaporization is a physical process. When you heat water, water turns into steam. But steam is still H2O, isn't it? Steam is also still water. So, no matter how much you heat water, water remains water. Similarly, you know, if you filter water, what will happen? 
the water that falls into the filter will be the water that will come out of the filter so filtering also does not change water similarly if you cool water water will become ice water will become ice like this however it remains water on cooling because ice water steam you know as we learnt in the previous chapter they are all just three forms of water water hasn't changed so this helps us conclude that water is a pure substance on the other hand look at milk is milk a pure substance scientists have you know analyzed milk and using different processes like filtration a special process called crystallization and many other processes they have concluded that milk is not a pure substance in fact milk contains enzymes vitamins pigments salts proteins and sugar again all these are complicated terms you know which we haven't yet learnt about enzymes vitamins pigments and all but the point here is that milk can be broken down into these substances so milk you know if you carry out many physical processes like if you boil it and then if you carry out a special process called pasteurization many things happen and milk can actually be separated into all these components understood so as you can see milk is a mixture it's not a pure substance similarly take your soft drink cans are soft drinks pure they aren't using special physical processes you can actually separate soft drinks into carbon dioxide water a substance called caffeine and different flavor chemicals so as you can see it does not contain the same kind of particles carbon dioxide is a pure substance water is a pure substance but as you can see carbon dioxide and water and caffeine and flavor chemicals so you know soft drinks contain different types of particles so soft drinks can't be pure isn't it similarly they can be broken down into these different substances by using physical processes so they are not pure let's take another example what do you think about salt water it's not pure and you can you know easily find out why salt water is not pure it contains two types of particles it has sodium chloride particles and water particles isn't it but we had just said that a pure substance contains only one kind of particles so sodium chloride is pure water is pure but salt water is not a pure substance understood it's a mixture 